Can you talk about sharp ratios? Um, what do you think is realistically achievable versus the common perception? We all want a higher risk adjusted return and the sharp ratio is intended, it's, it's one way of trying to estimate what the risk adjusted return. It's basically just your, your compounded annual return minus the risk-free rate divided by the volatility of your return. So it's basically excess returns divided by the how volatile are those excess returns. It's not the best metric out there, but it's been around a long time and it's widely accepted as a as a universally applicable way to evaluate the risk adjusted return of something. So people want the highest sharp ratio possible. What I have found in the past 25 years is that there's a huge uh, gulf between reality and perception. Um, and it, it's, it's enormous and it's consistent, meaning that there's just a massive um, belief system out there that's just fundamentally false. Everyone thinks that, you know, a sharp ratio of one is okay. And that a sharp ratio of two is kind of like a B, you know, a grade report card. And that over two is when, you know, you're doing really well. Um, and you're getting you know closer to having an A in the class and whatnot. But if you collect data on every manager that's ever existed, every mutual fund, SMA, ETF, hedge fund, um, you know, USITs, CITs, all of them, uh, it's almost impossible to find someone who's maintained a sharp ratio greater than one. My philosophy and what we do here at Standpoint is try to find sources of return that are realistic and sustainable, that mix together well. We could simplify it like this. We could say there's two different ways to try to get a sharp ratio of one. The first one would be to concentrate in an asset class and try to become some sort of an expert in that asset class and simply be better than everyone else. Like you focus just on tech stocks or you focus just on commercial real estate or small cap value or something, and you try to be better than everyone else in the world at that. And if you can pull that off, there's a chance that you'll have the uh, sharp ratio that you want, right? But that's going to be a lonely place. Not I've never seen anybody sustain pole position or first place in a category for an extended period of time. So that to me, it, 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 it's intuitive and it seems like a good idea, but empirically it's a disaster. Very few people have been able to pull that off. If any, I actually none come to mind. Um, the second approach, which is, um, sounds more complicated, but it's not, and it's actually works a lot better is diversify, go find sustainable strategies that have low, but real reliable sharp ratios of say 0.3 or maybe even 0.4, but make sure that each one of those individual strategies or asset classes is unrelated to the other ones. And something magical happens when you combine strategies or asset classes that are not redundant with one another. They don't all lose money at the same time. And they don't all have, you know, large gains at the same time. When you do that, you say you can take a, a two different asset classes, both of which have a sharp ratio of 0.3, pull them into the portfolio and your portfolio can have a sharp ratio of one, simply because those two asset classes are uh, both making money but the pistons aren't moving together. They're not going up and down at the same time. They're offsetting each other. And that is how you could potentially and more realistically achieve a sharp ratio, you know, maybe not of one, but you know, greater than what other people are experiencing. So, but it's not very exciting to people. Um, and it, it's not very intuitive at first, but nothing about portfolio management or the mathematics of portfolio management is intuitive at first.